Hello and welcome to this Tuesday edition of our fireside chat. We don't need a fireside t today because the fire's outside. It is warm and it is hot outside. We are near the, near the end of July and this is the we're in, in summertime. And it's going to go quickly. Pretty soon we'll be looking at the fall and we'll be noticing the change in the temperature and everything. And I used to get bothered by that. You know, I just want to hold on to summer, I want to hold on to these times. And I'm, I'm having to learn to not look at the seasons and not look at the, the weather as, as my, the basis of my security and my comfort, but to, to, to change my perspective. I talked on Sunday a little bit, and I've taught a whole course on this before, that, that we are not to be conformed to this world, it's Romans 12 too, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That means we're, what God's put in us can, will only come to the outside as we learn to think in different terms, not think in the terms that we maybe were raised in or even taught in church in, or certainly that this world is thinking in. If you look at the media today, if you look at our news media, you look at everything that's going on out in the, in the world today and our social media, it all has certain basic ways of thinking about things, thinking about what's going on right now, thinking about po politics, thinking about the, the, the health and thinking about all these threats. There's a way that the world thinks about these things, but it's not the way God thinks about them. And Romans 12, 2 says that we need to learn to change how we think, to think the way God thinks about situations. And this is not some casual choice we have to make. It's life and death, not just for us, but to, for those that God has put us here to influence our family, other people in the church, and people that are around us. We are here for a reason, and we've got to learn to think in God's terms. So we're going to look today, this applies to what we're all going through right now, and not just how to go through this, but how to overcome, which is what we're called to do. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 is just described very briefly the kind of pressure that he was under. And I've read this in church before. He said, we are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, which means I don't understand what's going on, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. All of those describe First of all, the experience that he was having, that he was pressure on all sides, that, that he was confused. He didn't understand what was going on, why certain things were happening. He, didn't, he was um, struck down in some cases. Paul, by the way, wrote this from prison. So he's struck down, but in each case he compares that, but the ultimate hasn't happened. I'm not in, I'm not in despair. I'm not, I'm not destroyed. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I may be uh, uh, pressured on every side, but, but I'm not crushed. So the ultimate hasn't happened because it can't happen as long as I don't look at that. And then he goes on to tell us a secret. He said, we do not lose heart. And boy, is that critical today. Even though our outward man is perishing, but the inward man, the real you on the inside, the real me said, is getting stronger, renewed, day by day. And this is the secret. This is what we lead to learn. For our light affliction, which is just for a moment, is working for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So Paul learned to look at his life and what was going on in his life, not in terms of this realm, not in terms of these experiences, but in terms of eternity and what this meant for eternity. Because all of us are here as Christians on an assignment together. And this assignment is in this world. And it is to, in order to do this, we have to overcome this world and the issues of this world and the pressures of this world and allow God to work in us to do his will. And Paul says, my secret is this, because I, I compare this momentary light affliction, what he was going through, this for you and me right now, is in terms of time, the Bible calls it a hand's breath. It's here now and it's gone tomorrow. So however severe your struggle, however severe this is, it is just, it, in, in terms of eternity, it's, it's just a moment in eternity. But if we're looking at this, at this, oh my goodness, this is never gonna end. If we're looking at this in terms of this realm, we will become overwhelmed and it's very hard to overcome it. But if we look at this in terms of eternity, this is just a momentary thing. Whatever we're going through, we can go through this because it's just for a moment. But it's, it's 
earning for us a far greater, more weighty, more valuable reward. How we go through this and whether we overcome and whether we do what God's put us here to do will determine the reward. And that is for eternity. And it is immeasurably greater than what we may go through here. And Paul says in the next verse, for we look not at the things that are seen. And when we're struggling, when we're overwhelmed as a Christian, think of it. It's because you've been looking at things that are seen and they talk to you. They tell you you're not going to make it. They tell you we're going to die. They tell you all these things that tell us and all they're designed to do is to get us to lay down, to quit, to be discouraged, discouraged, and to be fearful. But Paul says, I don't look at those things. Did he mean he ignored them? No, he realized they were there, but they didn't move him because he didn't dwell on them. He didn't meditate on them. He didn't keep his focus on them. For we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. What are the things that are not seen? Eternity, the reward we have in heaven, the crown of, of glory that God is going to give to us, hearing the words from our Lord, well done, good and faithful servant, instead of hearing from him. Look at what you could have done and what you didn't do. You retreated, you caved in, you backed down. I don't want to live with those words. So what motivates me to go forward is I want to hear those words well done because from his lips, those are worth everything we could ever go through. For the things that are seen, this natural realm, COVID-19, all the mess that's in the world today, it's momentary, it's temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. So my question for you today is what are you looking at? What is your focus on? If it's just when we go to church or we get online and watch church, and that, that's not enough. We have to learn to dwell on these things and meditate on these things, saturate our mind with the things of eternity, because that is where you were going to live for eternity. And what we experience there is determined by how faithful we are to overcome and come through these things. So I'm here today to encourage you. I'll be here tomorrow to encourage you. We need to encourage one another to lift up our eyes from where we are and to see the eternity, which is our destination. And I don't believe it's very far away. So be encouraged. Challenge yourself. Keep developing a relationship with the Lord, and he will see you through this. God bless you. I hope this encouraged you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We'll be back again tomorrow, and we'll look forward to sharing some more things with you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.